Aha! This is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you will need. This as well. The big old Mikey boy was the latest winner on the Patreon poll. This mini is a bit too biblical for Papa Laborte's taste. You know, it's got that Ameno vibe all over it, because the goose is a Christ symbol and the Roman centurion armor is not as high fantasy as the rest of the game. It just feels strange in a high fantasy universe that has some similarities religion-wise. But that's just old Papa Laborte's mumbling. Anyway, Papa Laborte's approach this time was a pure heavenly look. I know in the game these angels got corrupted and evil, but I wanted to have this boss in a pre-corrupted form. Don't worry, I have some pretty good ideas for the corrupted angel look for Archangel Raphael, and if you want to see that, just vote on it on Patreon next time. Alrighty! This time, we use the airbrush. Oh my god, am I watching Angel Girardes? No, it's still good old Papa Laborts. But I want to implement the airbrush into future videos as well. We start with the airbrush to apply Talarn Sand to the wings and halos. If you don't have an airbrush, you can do this with a brush too. Obviously, it's gonna take a lot more time, so please do get an airbrush. I'm an airbrush novice myself, but if you have a basic understanding of paint dilutions and how colors blend, then it will be easy straight for you. Ok, when we cover everything nice and evenly, we switch to demonic yellow and aim for the center of the halos with your airbrush. It will blend Easy peasy with the talent sand. Continue the process on the inner part of the wings. If you don't have an airbrush, try wet blending the colors together. Or maybe glazing, but glazing will take you some time. Gradually decrease the highlight areas on the halos with ice yellow to focus the airbrush's way more. Move it closer to the mini and apply small bursts while constantly moving the airbrush. I use a single action airbrush with a 0.5mm needle and I barely pull the trigger to achieve this gradient. With pure white, we add the brightest highlight to the halo. Look how closely I apply the paint to the mini. This way I can create a small area on the halo. The beauty in the airbrushing is that if you make a mistake, you can fix these gradients very fast without glazing or wet blending. Not that I try to make a bad rap for uh, glazing, but this is entertainingly fast. Okay? Okay. I went back to apply some saturated yellow to the wings, because it became a bit pale. By the way, as you can see on my cup, I don't really clean the airbrush between colors, just a bit of airbrush cleaner and I dump in the next color. When you work on the same section, you don't need to too early clean the airbrush because you blend the paints in the cup basically, and that's okay if you incrementally increase the color values. If you want to paint a different section, that is dark green, for example, then you should give a profound cleaning, but we are using colors that are close to each other in value. So it's okay. <music> Lastly, I add some squig orange to the end of the wings. This will make it a bit warmer, like these wings are made of fire. I think it fits the pure angelic dim, but let me know in the comments if you have a different approach or ideas for the angels corrupted or pure form alike. Ok guys, now clean your airbrushes or I will slap on your tiny hand because that was all the airbrush time for now. 
We start working on the drips and cover everything with Gortor Brown. I use a dry brush to apply the paint, but my brush is wet like Granny's armpit. Slap it on and only leave the extreme shadows black. I paint it like the light is coming from the left, so the extreme shadows will be around his left side, next to his shield. His left side is very hard to reach with the brush, because of the shield and wings, so it's convenient to make it the darkest part. Always try to cut some corners and don't try to create highlight areas on hard to reach parts because I will slap on your tiny hand and you will cry. Not because of the paint, but because it will be a hassle to paint it nicely. Add some Karak stone to the quarter brow. Papa Laborz wanted to make an off-white rope for good old Mikey here with a very high contrast. The trick to achieve this is simple. Think it through very carefully. These browns will be our shadows. They can't be our mid-tones because then our off-white robe will read as brown. But we can't just go from very dark to super white because that's racist and not only that but it's nearly impossible to blend it nicely. So we go step by step covering our shadows 90% of the drips surfaces. Base layer consistency because there are a lot of folds on that drip. Guys, we are at the first glazing part. How exciting it is. Move your brush from the dark to the light area. Same brush motion every time. Guys, do you realize how glazing is such a perfect metaphor for this game? You know because you have the light and dark areas on the tiles, yes. And, and with, with glazing, we go from the dark to the light, see? Yeah, these ties are still wrapped uh, because uh, I haven't played the game. I don't know how to play it. I'm just painting it. Okay? So, Papa Laporte starts just so deep sometimes, you know, and intellectual. With pure Karak stone, we move to our light shadows. As you see, my paint consistency is more of a heavy glaze than a base layer, so I need to go back a couple of times to increase the opacity. But this way, it will smoothly blend into our previous layer, and I think it's appropriate for an angel to have a nice and smooth drapes, and not some rough cloth. Take a break, guys, during painting big minis like this. You might miss a fold or two on the drip that needs some highlights and you immediately want to go for the next highlight color. But if you do that, then please send a lovely postcard to Papa Laborz and I will send you a postcard with a picture of you and me while I slap on your tiny hand. Alrighty, one coat of glazing to increase the smoothness and we are good to go. By the way guys, one of my lovely patrons, Sir Robin, suggested that I should do a video about glazing because that's the most common technique I use in the videos. I think YouTube has plenty of these videos, but maybe you guys want Papa Labor to tell you how to glaze profoundly, so let me know in the comments please. Thank you. Ok, flayed one flash time. This color has such a nice name. Now we gradually decrease the highlight areas as we apply the paint. We use colors that are close to each other in value, so even if you don't want to blend them, they will blend naturally if you place the highlights right. Apply it more bravely around the torso and the face to create the focal point on the torso and the head. to make it smooth, like Granny's budget. Now it's time for the ivory. This color needs to act as our brightest highlight and our mid-tone. To achieve that, I apply it with a bit more organic approach. At some places, apply it with the base layer consistency and at other places I just glaze over our previous layers as a filter. Not over the dark shadows, but the brighter ones. This is very important you guys, if you glaze ivory in the dark recesses, then a very big slap will hit your tiny hand, so don't do it. Look at it side by side. 
See the flayed one face is much more bony and sandy color, but then comes the ivory as an off-white and BOOM! Magic happened. Suddenly our shadows became darker and the drapes reads as off-white. I think this is very interesting and the result is super high contrast. Do you like it? Then please like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a nice comment like Hey Papa Laborts, yeah that drape was quite okay. Moving on. Jesus! Get it? Because there is a goose and you know the plural form of goose is geese and... Uh, anyway, let's paint that bird. Same colors as for the drape, but I don't want it to be as high contrast as the drapes. We highlight it with flayed one flesh, but focus these highlights to the upper part of the goods. If you ever have any doubts, we highlight it with flayed one flesh, but focus these highlights to the upper part of the goods. If you ever have any doubts how to place highlights, just think of it is as a gradient. Do not stress yourself with secondary highlights or stuff like that. Those things are for the light scientists. Choose a section that will be dark and choose one to be bright. Light is coming from above, so it makes sense to make the bright part toward the upper goose part. See? Easy peasy grannies butt cheeky. Same goes for Avery, just in smaller areas. Remember in one of the previous videos I talked about making gradients on small stuff. Check these tail feathers. Small? Sure, they are small, so I just make a gradient on them, that would make sense. Does it make sense? In an overall look? Yes, it does. Does light come like this with a bright halo behind it and the light source above it? No clue, because I never saw a halo in real life, so checkmate, uh, light scientists. Lastly, I glaze some pure white. I barely use white for highlights, but that's some godly goose, so, so I guess it's okay this time. It's a glaze, so it won't be really white when the paint dries because all the paints are a bit muted once they dry. For the beak, I used squig orange and highlighted it with fire dragon bright on the top of it. A bit tricky to tell where the beak ends and the head begins, but it's no big deal. The eye is black, with a tiny dot of white, but you only need to do this if you want to keep your papa title. There were some previous videos where you could achieve that title, so watch all the previous videos to find out where. Thank you. Now angel skin time. Spoiler alert, it will be a regular skin tone, but don't worry, it will look nice. For the first layer we use medium rust. This is a rich red-brown color, great for the shadows on the skin. Smoothly apply it all over the skin parts. We mix some brown rose to the medium rust and start to sketch the highlight areas. Cover most of the skin's surface and don't paint over the crevices and the left side of the body. Then glaze over it with two coats, like we did in the previous steps. With pure brown rose, we start to introduce our mid-tone to the skin parts. Base layer consistency and use some stapling. Try not to cover all of our previous layers. If you paint over the shadows, we will lose contrast. Glazing time! The neck of the mini was quite a challenge to figure out which muscle goes where, but that's okay. Quick brush strokes and don't let the paint set in the crevices. Add some Kiesler flash focusing on the muscles on his right side because light is coming from the left. I mean obviously it would come from his halo and wings but uh, we are not painting the mini like that. I use a bit of a tint consistency, gradually decreasing the highlight areas. I increase the contrast with some ice yellow mixed with Kiesler flash. brightest parts of the skin. I add some ivory. 
This will give some shine to it and lighten up the skin a bit more, so our angel has a light skin color, but not a pale one. With a super light glaze of demonic yellow, add the hue next to the ivory parts. This is gentle, like when you give a good night kiss to granny on the mouth. It's a small gesture, but it will go a long way because this yellow will increase the light values on the skin very nicely. And with that, our angel skin is done. Like it? I really hope you do. Now guys, take a little break because it's NMM time. You need to refresh yourself and have some energy because this will take some time. But the good news is you can do this. It's easy and simple and Papa Laborts has faith in you. Our base layer is the Rhinox height. As you see, I use a dry brush again for the large surfaces to apply the paint fast. I switch back to the Kolinsky brush where I reach the parts that need some fine details. After that, I go in with Dumble Brown. We need nice and opaque layers, so take your time. If you're good at multitasking, then do the golden ribbon and shield as well. But good old Papa Labwarts can't even remember what happened yesterday, so it's a bit hard for me to focus on all these parts at once. Uh, probably a CT scan wouldn't hurt. So, where was I? Anyway, I started applying Dumble Brown with a base layer consistency covering 90% of the Rhinox hide layer. XV88 time. Reduce the highlight areas as we go brighter and brighter with our gold NMM. Think about the shapes that we need to highlight. The armor over the arm and shoulders are basically cylinders. So we have the forearm and upper part of the arm that will have the same highlight placement all over it basically. You know you can put your mini under a lamp if you need help with highlight placements, because over a black primer the lamp will show us the brightest highlights and it's up to us how big we want our other layers to divide the surfaces. This is very interesting, because if we choose a color that will be our biggest section on our divided surface, then guess what? That will be our mid-tone. And that will be the color that our mini will read as. Of course we are painting gold, so we need to have other colors to read as gold. But there will be a dominant color for that as well. Glazing time to smooth out the layers. Continue the process with a mix of Zamesic Desert and XV88. Smaller and smaller areas inside our XV88 layer. You can cover 95% of the XV88 layer, it will look nice, but leave a little bit of it so we can keep the incremental values of our highlight placement. Now with pure Zamesi Desert, we increase the yellow tone by gradually decreasing the highlight area. Both base layer and the heavy glaze consistency would work, but with the latter, you need more layers to increase the opacity. If you want to paint nice NMM, you have to sink some time in it. Basically, if you want to paint anything that uh, looks uh, better than average, you need to work for it. Papa Labors don't mind painting for long hours, because if I'm happy with the end result, I always feel like it was worth it. Smooth it out with some glazing. Because we are using colors that are close to each other in value, we can do this with one or two coats of glazing and the result will be smooth like Granny's butt cheek.
add some flayed one flesh to the brightest highlight parts and you can see that our Roman centurion armor starts to look like metal because of the high contrast and highlight placement. It's a thin base layer consistency again. And I do some edge highlighting at this phase to see if it looks right. Spoiler alert, it will look very nice so just trust the process. Glazing is awesome you guys, so do it, but remember as we go smaller and smaller with the highlight areas, our glazing brush strokes need to follow that in motion. Otherwise we will kinda desaturate the armor with fade one flash and we don't want to do that right now. Lastly, highlight the armor with ivory. This will make it shiny and bright like it's a nice polished metal. Edge highlight as well with a base layer consistency and using the side of your brush tip. Gently move it alongside the edges. Do not apply pressure because then your lines will be thick and messy and you will get a slap on your tiny hand. Take your time and go back to the parts that you might have missed and check your layers. If they are not smooth enough, then blend it more with some glazing or any other technique of your choice. Apply a filter of demonic yellow next to the brightest highlights of the armor and the robes. Cover all the feathers on the helmet with word bearers red. This color is perfect because it's know how to bear. Then cover 80% of the feathers with evil sun scarlet. I divided this half circle shape into two parts. I covered all of the right side of it and more around the edges of the left. Remember, light is coming from the left, so everything on the mini needs to be communicated. Continue the process with white rider red by decreasing the highlight areas with a base layer consistency. For the brightest highlights, mix some ivory to the white rider red and apply it in a heavy glaze consistency. If you finish a mini from the game following, good old Papa Laborti's tutorial, please send the results to me, like this gentleman did, who painted Andra just wonderfully. Now it's sandal time, or it's probably a kalige that uh, soldiers wore in ancient Rome. See that? Papa Laborts is now a history channel as well. I'm so smart. Cover the whole thing with Dumbul Brown and all the red steps and his kilt, or uh, should I say, Teruges. Uh, no idea how to pronounce it, but it's the kilt that he is wearing. For the highlights, I use Karakstone in a heavy glaze consistency, slowly building up the volume of the brightness. The sandals are basically a cylinder shape, so the highlights are basically a connected line separated with the skin, if uh, that makes sense. For the last highlight, use flayed one flesh but just a tiny bit and the leather parts are done. Now it's NMM time again! Are you guys happy? Papa Labort is happy because it will be so crispy like Granny's pig ear chips. Cover all the blades with Dark Reaper. Then we sketch out the highlights with Warp Fin Grey. I like these zigzag like patterns, but you can change it up however you want, it will look fine. Or you can do just a simple gradient like we did in the Sir Ronan tutorial previously. By the way, you should check that one out guys, okay? After the video, not now. I use these cold bluish and purplish greys to harmonize with our yellow and orange wings. Use some stippling to blend the colors more easily. Now glaze over with warp fin grey. This would take a couple of layers if you watched my previous videos and I think you know why. That's right, the sword blade is a flat surface and blending over flat surfaces is always more time consuming. 
This blade is very nicely made, so take your time with it and make it smooth like Granny's butt cheek. Let's increase the contrast with sky grey. Try to apply the paint like you want to do lines that are parallel with the sword. It doesn't have to look like lines, but the brush's motion will create more organic highlights. Use stippling here too, like we did in the previous step. Then glaze again to smooth out the transition. Remember guys, this is crucial. Same brush motion every time. You are a glazing machine sent from the future to glaze over everything and spread the word around about the awesomeness of the technique. To make things a little bit more interesting, we highlight the top part of the blade with warmer tones. Use flayed one flash for that. If you use the same highlight colors all over the miniature, it will create a more harmonic look and create the effect that everything on that mini belongs in the same environment. For the bottom part, I use ivory mixed with sky grey, so that part of the blade will stay cold, but still shiny. Blend both new layers with some glazing. For the final highlights, I use ice yellow for the top part and blend it in with some glazing. As you see, these warm highlights created the effect that the blade reflects the yellow of the wings or the halo. Basically, that's how very shiny and reflective metals work. They just reflect stuff, you know? Lastly, we will do some edge highlights for the sword with ice yellow, like we did with the armor, and the blade is good as done. The sword grip is pretty simple, I just use some heavy glaze of flayed one flesh over a layer of Gortor brown. This way it looks like some polished wood. Then I painted the rivets and buckles with some dark reaper and a dot of flayed one flesh to imitate a glint. This is really simple and I was pretty proud that I didn't forget about them, because uh, Papa Labos usually does that. Ok guys, we are at the finish line with this mini, but we got a super nice part to do. The shield. The shield is so freaking awesome, you guys, with that huge grumpy face on it. We need to do NMM for that too. Paint the flat part of the shield with flayed one flesh. Not gonna lie, you guys, this is gonna be a real test of your skills, but more of a test of patience, because we need to leave those stripes around the face crispy and dark, so it will be a back and forth process until you have a nice and opaque layer of flayed one flesh, but Papa Labors know that you will handle this perfectly. If you are done with that, we apply some ivory glaze to the top left part of the shield, and to the bottom right, glaze some Karak stone so we will have a nice diagonal gradient over the flat part. Then let's make the bottom right part a bit more darker with the glaze of Gortor Brown. Now we do the gold parts exactly the same way like we did with the armor. But the highlight placement is a bit trickier because this is a face, not a cylinder. So I do the same approach for the face as for the whole mini. Very nice, the neighbors found, found their good old drill. So lovely. It's alright, it's only a Sunday afternoon. Oh, oh, you guys have hammers too. That's good. Okay. So I do the same approach for the face as for the whole mini. Like the light is coming from the left side. To make this believable, you need to plan out how you are going to do the highlights, but Papa Labors will give you a super secret technique to do this real fast, and you can learn about it on Patreon. JK JK, but if you choose to support me on Patreon, that would be a huge help for me making these videos. So the super big secret is that for the last two or three highlight colors that we use, we only use it on the left side on the face. I mean, there is not much to it. Because we use the previous colors for the shadows, it will create an organic and believable look in the end. But you need to trust the process. 
and do not highlight every little section because that will look boring. You feel like you are doing much work throughout the process, but the end result will be a bit bland. So the method is the same. New layer of color, then a bit of glazing, or if you are a bit bored of glazing, which is outrageous, but if that's the case, just use stippling, and you will end up with a bit rougher enamel, but it will still read as gold. But Papa Labors just love glazing. It's not a problem, I can stop anytime I want, I just don't want to. Now we place the highlights like we would do to a regular face. Forehead, cheekbones, nose and nostrils, the top part of the mouth, a bit of the jaw and the jawline. Whenever you are in doubt, just look for some reference photos. Once you get the hang of it, you will be sketching highlights like Granny make cookies with pig fat. Smooth and crispy. That's the goal. Guys, we are at the finish line. We use the same colors like we did for the wings to paint the tiny wings on his feet. Talard sand is our base layer. Then a bit of demonic yellow to the upper parts of those tiny wings and then a bit of ice yellow, but only a touch. This is the feet you guys, you don't need to exaggerate the looks and details of it because our focal point is on the torso and not on the legs, okay? Okay. Now for the very last step, edge highlight the feathers on the wing with white and ice yellow. We do this because we only use the airbrush for the wings and it feels a bit homogenic next to the angel torso texture wise. So it will make it a bit more interesting for our eyes. Some more drilling. Drill all the way. Okay. You done? No. Maybe now? Of course not. Nice and slowly. <laughs> don't don't rush it, dude. No, okay, it's over. So it will make it a bit more interesting for our eyes and more uniform and harmonic feel to the overall paint job. I use the base layer and the heavy glaze consistency and you want to aim those lines to the inner parts of the feathers. Use the ice yellow on the demonic yellow parts and white on the ice yellow parts so it will be nice and it will increase the definition of the wings. Guys, Archangel Michael is done. This mini took like 16 hours to paint so it's not a fast one. But I'm not a very fast painter. But looking at the end result, Papa Labort is quite pleased with it. And I hope you guys like it as well. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks goes for my patrons who choose to support this kind of videos. With a special shout out to Jonathan Rose. If you want to support Papa Labort's work, you can do it on Patreon. The links are in the video description. You will have early access to these video tutorials and you can vote on the next mini. So if you support me on Patreon, I can steal my neighbor's drill and uh, then I go to jail, but I can ba bail myself out. So that works out well, I think. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt chick. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.